Get a little piece of that check when I was. <laughs> <laughs> Nick was out there watching. What's it like to have Nick around just, you know, having his presence being felt and, and sort of inspiring you guys? Yes, yeah, awesome. Um, it starts in the classroom because he is a leader. Uh, I know he's a man of uh, little words, but when he get in that classroom and he get out on the field, he's having fun, and that's what we want. Deuce, how would you describe your coaching philosophy? Well, here's what coaching is to me, okay? Here's one, putting these guys in the best position possible to make plays. That's number one. Two, getting them to run through a brick wall with me and not for me, because I'm going to run through it first. If they decide to come along, I got the right guy. That's it, one and two. What do you think, I mean, obviously we know what Nick's done, but um, the rest of the group that you have been able to work with and look at, what do you see from this guy? Man, I see a good group. Jerome, Pierre, and of course, Defoe, just getting here. Those guys are working their butts off. And they love being here. You know, during this time, they could be anywhere, at the beach, vacation. Now they're walking through those doors every day working, and that's what we want. Deuce, it seems like from getting a chance to watch you out there with the guys, just picking up on how detail-oriented you seem as a head coach, I guess, or as a coach, just how. Oh, thank you. <laughs> hey, how you doing? <laughs> Come on. Sorry I need you on my team. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> just how, how important is that for you, especially in the spring at this right. time when, when you have younger guys, too? And all that? Yeah, just um, – being able to live vicariously through my players is number one, because I wish that I could still play the game. Uh, when I did play, I loved every minute of it, the blood, the sweat, the tears. That's a part of the dream, and I loved it. So the closest I can get between the lines is play through them. So every ounce of energy, everything I got, every day they're going to get it, good, bad, or ugly. I saw Pierre uh, Strong pushing the board or something like that on the grass. That was, that was yeah. What is, what's the yeah. Idea for that? Well, let me just say this to you. Anytime we put the ball on the ground, we're going to get on the ground. And that's called a sled. It has a very unique name. And when you catch up with him, ask him what the name is. <laughs> he had to pull you to the side to tell you. Deuce, Kevin has talked about, you know, this new offense. And obviously people have focused on Ken as, as, as the new coordinator brought in. But he's mentioned it as a kind of a collaborative effort. Can you talk about kind of how that, that effort and that the collaboration has worked out? Over yeah, it starts with Kevin. It starts with Kevin. Uh, Kevin got all of us involved. You know, when you look around the league uh, over so many years, you have the coordinator, you have the head coach, and that's where it starts and stops. But Kevin is giving us all a part of that coordinator side. You know, Ken is the guy, of course. Ken is running his offense, but we're all involved with the plays. We're all involved in game planning. So I salute Kevin with that. Deuce, we're kind of led to believe we're going to see a lot of shotgun offense this year. How does that affect the running game? I don't know. Well, man, it, it's been around for a while now. You know, of course, back when I played, a lot of things were under center, and you couldn't do the RPOs like you wanted to. When the RPOs came into this game, then it was a lot of shotgun. So you got to be able to run your offense no matter if it's trap, no matter if it's zone, no matter what it is. You got to be able to do everything out of gun just like you do most of it from under center. So shotgun has been a part of the game for a long time. We're just going to take it and do it and use it ourselves. So what, what did you think of Nick Chubb from far away and then once you've gotten to be around him, um, is your impression changing on him? Yeah, it's funny you say that because I had a chance to work Nick out uh, when he was coming out of Georgia. And I believe it was Nick and maybe Sony Michelle or someone like that. And going down there and just see Nick go through the drills, I knew he was special. Um, it was hard to get words out of him, of course, but when you did get a word out of him, it was yes, sir, no, sir. And that was it, you know. So just being able to work with him, Dan, and being able to see him uh, just get in this lead and take this lead by storm, being able to pose his will, you know, I, I expect nothing less. in this time of year, looking forward to try to put that on the field against your real opponents? Yeah, you're saying the competitive side of those guys. Once again, I, I live vicariously through them. And I talked about, not to be redundant, but I talked about the energy. As coaches, when we got get out here between these lines, we have to have energy. That comes from every coach on the field. Sometimes they're going to go out there, they're not going to feel it. But we don't have that choice as a coach. We got to go out there and feel it every day. What do, um, what do you expect when Naheem finally can get out there? Um, what do you think he can add to that? Man, uh, you go back and look at his body of work, no matter if it was at the Colts or Buffalo. 
He's a guy that has a good body of work, put some good stuff on tape. He's a nightmare for safeties and linebackers. I expect for him to get back and do the same thing he's been doing. Can't wait to get him match up on a backer. It's a mismatch. So we can't wait to get him out there once again, get healthy and kind of show the world what he can do again. Is there a coach that you as a player were around that you're trying to, I don't want to say copy, but just really had an impact on you that you're drawn on from that experience as you now enter the, the coaching foray? Um, I had, you know, I had the pleasure to be around a lot of great coaches from Ray Rhodes to Bill Cowher to John Gruden. I mean, the list goes on. So I was able to learn a little bit of everything from them. Um, and being able to take some of that old school coaching into the new world helps me. And I, I, once again, I, <clears throat> when I look at those guys and how they affected me as a player, I take a little bit from everybody and I inject them with it. Hey, dude, so <clears throat> you, you played in this league for a long time and you're coaching now. The Browns gave extensions today to, to Kevin Stefanski. Oh, really? Congrats. Awesome. Awesome, Kev. Congrats. <laughs> Good timing. Yeah. Um, what does that mean from both a player's and coach's standpoint to know that there is that kind of stability within a franchise? I think it starts with the organization first. It says what the organization thinks about the coach and the GM and what he's been doing. His body of work, you can look at it, has been awesome. All right, so you start with organization and you start with the owner and how he sees it. Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. But on top of that, um, just being able for guys that play the game, for guys that coach the game, under coach, <clears throat> I don't know what's in. Something choking me up. <laughs> it's an emotional day, I guess. I should have some water. Yeah. Where's my sister? She left. Sorry. Um, it means a lot. It means a lot just to have that and uh, the security. Nice. Guys, I got it. Nice to meet you. Really nice to meet you. Hey, how you doing? Very nice to meet you. Nice okay, very nice to meet you. Okay. Tell me about just you know coming. I mean, you always had a great defensive line last yeah. you know, last couple of years in, yeah. in Houston, but. Yeah. Coming here, the opportunity to work with this group. Yeah. What what what, what was this? Was, what was it specifically attracted you? Here? Yeah, I mean, well, the very first thing was just the opportunity to work with Jim Schwartz, right? I mean, you're talking about a guy that has just a wealth of knowledge. He's been incredible at, at, at the attack front. He's won championships. Uh, he's produced hundred million dollar defensive tackles, hundred million dollar defensive ends. So just the opportunity just to work with a guy that understands the front, understands attacking, understands pressuring, okay, and just knows how to call it on game day. You have to get excited about that. Then you add in Miles Garrett, right, defensive player of the year, Darius Smith, Shelby, Dalvin, you know, Mo. Now we get to work with Mike Hall. It was kind of like a dream come true almost. So, Speaking of Mike Hall, what have you thought about him early on? Mike, Mike's been great. Mike's been great. He's been real serious and just all about ball. He's explosive. Uh, he, he knows how to rush already. We're tweaking some things right now with him, but he's physical. He's fast. I love the way he's cornering right now, and he's just you know just scratching the surface of what he can do for us in this defense. It's funny. I asked Deuce a similar question, and I mean, coaching style-wise, you guys both seem very detail-oriented <laughs> when we see you out there with yeah. the position group. Drills. Absolutely, yes. Um, how important is that to you as a coach, and and especially this point in the spring? Well, it's everything. I mean, uh, you know, you know, you got some guys, you know. Every, not everybody can be Miles Garrett, right? And so what separates everybody is details, your technique and details. And so the more that these guys can get down the details of their job, all right, and go out and execute it, the better off we'll be. So I'm, I really harp details, technique, fundamentals, and obviously effort. We got to be a high effort team at all times. You talk about that. I mean, how do you reinforce something when they're doing something well? Yeah. And when they're not doing something well, how yeah. do you make sure you, that, that balance of not being too hard on them, but also you know, drilling it into them because it's early? Well, you know, well, first of all, you know, I, I, I'm not the type of coach that you know, cusses my guys out. I don't believe that. They're grown, grown men that won a lot of games. My job is to make sure that they're doing things right, that they're building dependable habits, that they're working hard, that they're, they're giving tremendous effort on every single play. Whether it's we're in, in Indy okay, or team drill, nothing changes for us. We're still going to launch. We're still going to come off the ball. We're still going to attack people. We're going to use our hands. We're going to rush. We're going to be very detailed in all our games and our execution of our pressures. And uh, ultimately, we're always, at the end of the day, going to try and practice winning. Jack, Jim talked extensively last week about the wild card loss and what happened in okay. that game in Houston. Um, and I know there, were, there was that game, and then there was a couple games in the regular season where the D-line didn't get a sack. And he yeah. wasn't afraid to kind of choose a unit yeah, out for that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just getting that pressure, I mean, what do you think that 
you can bring. Obviously, so many guys are back, but yeah. just kind of maybe correcting some of those things that you got to see from the other <laughs> side, I guess, helping. Yeah, you know, and, and, and like, like I said, from, you know, from the start, we got a lot of guys with a lot of experience in rushing the passer. Right, got a guy with 60 sacks in his career. We got the defensive player of the year. So we have guys that can rush the passer. My job is to make sure that they do know the fine details of their pass rush plan, their pass rush games, all right, and they go out and execute at the end of the day. Okay? Everybody on this in this defensive line can rush. All right, it's my job is to find the guys that can rush together, right? Four guys equals one, rushing together, attacking the pocket, assaulting the pocket, and just all we're, we're just conversion on the pocket every single play. So once we establish that, then we talk about, you know, if we're not rushing, we're stealing. Okay, plain and simple. If we're not rushing, we're stealing. We're stealing from our kids, our family, the fans, everybody, this organization. So I want guys that want to get after the quarterback. That's what we're trying to figure out right here, right now. Okay, I want guys that want to rush, rush violently, come after the, the, their man, attack the pocket, assault the pocket, crush the pocket as much as they can. Uh, no, no, no finesse stuff. We want dogs that are just coming at the quarterback at all times. We want to suffocate the pocket. Okay. To offer that, you, we talk so much when we talk about pass rush, we talk about the yeah. guys on the edge, but how big is that that interior rush, you know, and then developing it? Because I know, like, you had that in, mm -hmm. you had that a lot in Houston. Yeah. They had it last year here with yeah. Alvin and such. Mm -hmm. How big, what does that do maybe different from that, that, that edge rush? Yeah, I mean, it's the most important part of the rush is those two defense tackles, okay? No, nothing can happen unless those two defense tackles are collapsing the depth of the pocket. And so we, we focus on those guys a lot on, on the different things that they have to do, the different techniques that they have to do to, in order to do that, right? They have to be specific with their foot, their, their, their footwork, with their hands and what they're doing with their hands. And then ultimately they have to be rushing together, right? Someone's gonna get the center, someone's gonna get the guard, but ultimately guys have to be rushing together, all right? So the defensive tackles, the quarterback standing right there. Yeah. You know, so, so we don't need to be running out or doing anything fancy. I want guys that are going forward at all times. I know um, Jim last week talked about you and your path and coming yeah. here and mentioned like you were willing to go earlier in your coaching career and yeah. start from the bottom. Like how much yeah. has that informed who you are and just obviously your background as a player and, and everything? Yeah, I mean, I, as a player, I was an undrafted free agent, right? And I had to start at the bottom and, and I had to learn the NFL game and learn how to practice and learn how to play in these games and, and playing tight games and then playing champ, uh, playoff games and championship games. All of that takes a level of experience, a level of training and straining and grit. And so I just try and bring that same, just, just that same style to my coaching. You know, I don't, I don't want anything handed to me for free. I don't want my guys to think that they need anything handed for free. Everything we do is predicated on hard work. That's it. I just want guys that are willing to work hard. I don't need any sidebars or anything like that. I just need guys that want to come in, listen, and work hard. I was asking uh, Deuce about, you know, in the offense, Kevin talked a lot about collaboration and, and development, mm -hmm. development of the offense, and, and, and he talked about that. But, you know, we talk about this system, and it's Jim Schwartz's system. Jim yeah. Schwartz. But I'm sure there's a lot more collaboration that goes into it that you could, you can find fingerprints of, mm -hmm. of yourself and, and Coach Tarver and, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. How does that collaboration work on the defensive side? How is that, especially when you have somebody that has, has yeah. sort of established himself as, a, as sort of a, his system? Yeah, it, it all starts with the guy up top, right? Jim Schwartz and, and you know, he, he's a great teacher first and foremost. Great teacher, great leader of men, all right? And he, he wants to empower his coaches. And that's the most important thing. There's no egos on that coaching staff. All those coaches are really, all, of, all the defensive coaches are really, really good coaches, smart coaches. They bring a lot of juice, a lot of energy, a lot of uh, knowledge of the game. And so all of us respect each other. We're all pushing each other because all, ultimately we all want the same thing. We want to win, okay? We want to win. We don't want to go home in January. Okay, we want to continue playing. And so in order to do that, everybody has to keep their ego at the door, all right, and come together as one. And, 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 and everything has to be, you know, geared toward the team. How much did you get? Go ahead. Okay, when you look at the guys you have, I mean, obviously Miles' and sack numbers have yeah. been what they've been the last few years. Absolutely. I mean, do you feel like you have multiple guys that can push for 10 plus sacks? Ab you? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, young Isaiah McGuire is one of those guys that he's been really coming on. Alex Wright had a nice season last year with five sacks. I think he can really push those numbers up to the double digits. You know, you're talking about youth that has a lot of length. 
power, speed in their game. Okay, they all know how to rush really well. They all know how to flip their hips and use their hands. So I'm excited about those two guys. You bring back Oboe. You got new guys like Quentin Jefferson. Mo looks great out here right now. So I'm just excited with the progress that the guys have been been making. You know, I, I know you know we're, we're we're just starting off and we're just sitting here and we're, we're playing in underwear. You know, but but eventually we got to play in pads. And I think what we see out here is going to translate night into, in, into nice into pads. How much of what you guys did in Houston, how much is there carryover, is there similarities, yeah. or, or is there DNA of what between the two systems, you know, the one yeah. you came from and the one that you're coming from? Uh, absolutely, yeah. So we, you know, we, we like to, you know, when we were in Houston, we were like, you know, uh, Schwartz has attacked uh, little brother. You know, and so, uh, you know, obviously it's Schwartz's system and, and everybody takes a part of, a, a, of that and they kind of add their own wrinkles to it. So it's the same system. All right, but I'm just coming in adding my little wrinkles to it. That's it, you know. And Schwartz, like I, like I said, he empowers his coaches. He allows us to do, to do our job. You know, he bounces ideas off of us. But ultimately, we we're, we're our job is to make sure that we're executing exactly what the defense coordinator wants. I know we haven't seen Miles out here yet, obviously, yeah. but just like defensive player of the year coming yeah. off the numbers he's put up like what more do you guys envision for him I know that <laughs> a, a lot more question. a lot more and, and Miles knows that and, and, and Miles is the type of person that you know he wants to be great you know he wants to be great he's not he's not you know just resting on his laurels and what he did last year he understands that he's working we've been in contact, uh, contact with each other and I know that he's been working he's working wor working hard I know he wants to come back and obviously when you lose in the playoffs you know, you, you, don't, you don't feel great about it. Yeah. And so he has things that he needs to work on. Everybody's working on some things. So you're going to see a drastic improvement from everybody this year. Just, I mean, how much, what's kind of, did you come into this, you know, this opportunity? What, what were kind of your, what's kind of your view of this, this opportunity you have here and, and the, you know, the way maybe you can kind of, Re, kind of reset, mm -hmm. recalibrate your, you know, your, your career. Um, I think any opportunity is is, is opportunity. Um, you know, just being on, being on this team and be able to come out and practice. You know, I have the opportunity to play. So I, I mean, I just go out every day and just and just cherish that and just go out there and just go as hard as I could and just learn as fast as I can. What have your first impressions been of some of the other linebackers on the because you're not the only new guy. Uh, uh, nah. guys. Uh man, we got a we got a crazy room. I mean, we still learn each other, it's still early, but you know, we're gonna have a lot of time spent together. But as of right now, we got a lot of characters. And um, you know, we got a, we got a great room, a good good mix of veterans, a good mix of young guys. So, you know, it's gonna be a lot of a lot of learning, a lot of teaching in that room. In what ways, you know, obviously, you know, you have that rookie year and, and you know the the numbers, you know, are looking good, you know. The, and then the injury happens. Mm -hmm. How much has, how much more has maybe that set, you know, kind of set you back mm -hmm. than maybe you thought initially? Um, I think I think it was a it was a growth and development thing for me. Um, I mean that that was just a route I guess my my career is supposed to take. Um, I learned a lot about myself. Um, I worked I worked on myself a bunch, and uh, my mindset has definitely shifted. I had 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 opportunity to have different perspective, you know, not not being able to play the game at one point. And um, I think it's just a work in progress, honestly, like nothing's ever set in stone, you know, until the day I retire. So, I mean, I, I, still, I still got a lot, a lot of football left in me. Um, I'm still 25, so we'll see. So, Mo Hurst came here last year and kind of had this great year before he mm -hmm. got hurt again, and he had been plagued by injuries before this. Mm -hmm. Like seeing what he did in this defense, one of your old teammates, yeah. like, does that give you some excitement or some confidence? And what has it been like for you to watch yeah. him here? I mean, just just being around Mo again, um, I'm from, you know I'm familiar, you know I'm comfortable. I, I have a guy I can lean on. I have somebody that, that understands who I am. You know I don't have to relearn Mo. You know so, I mean having that guy is is, is tremendous. You know playing behind him again is, is going to be great. So I mean we just working every day honestly. What, what is um, you know, Jim Schwartz's defense? Just I mean, what's that been like? You know what? Mm -hmm. You know for you know we hear obviously a lot about what it does for the defensive line. We hear a lot about what it does for the secondary. Mm -hmm. What for you guys in the, in, you know, that, that, that middle group? What, yeah. What does it, what does it do for you guys? I mean, we just running and cleaning stuff up. I mean, it allows us to play fast, you know, because I mean, we always keep a strong D line in, in his system. Um, so we playing behind a bunch of a, a good D linemen. We got a bunch of good DBs. So I mean, it just gives a chance to just just fly around and make plays, honestly. What your absence? Jim Schwartz describes that line as the front line as uh, the engine. Mm -hmm. of the what would you describe your group, your group, your unit 
Man, we the brain. I like we gotta communicate to everybody. We gotta we gotta talk to the front and be able to look behind us and talk to the to the to the back end. And you know, we in the center of everything. You know, in, in every play we involved, run or pass. So I mean, we we involved in everything. Communication gotta be on point, and you know, we gotta just be able to know what we're looking at. You obviously have a background in understanding the AFC North yeah. and the rivalries here. Just like how how excited are you? I mean, this just seems like the last few years, especially mm -hmm. maybe the most competitive division. Yeah. Now, nah, for sure, I think it's I think it's always been the most competitive division. Um, I love this division because you know they they run the ball, they they traditional and, and twelve personnel, 13, 22, You know all the all the big guys is, is liable to come in and play. So I mean, you you never know what you're gonna get. You know, you play Baltimore, you know, you play the Browns, you know, you play the Steelers. You know, you're gonna get the ball ran at you a couple times, more than a couple times, uh, than than all these other conferences that like to spread the ball around and, and you know and, and create five wise and matchups and stuff like that. So. And I'm happy to be back and I'm happy to be in the AFC North.